Welcome back to Julie's Wreath Boutique. This wreath is brought to you by Hobby Lobby. So, New Year's is around the corner and we need to get ready. So go to Hobby Lobby, pick up the products, and let's make a beautiful New Year's wreath together. But after that, we'll make it an everyday wreath so we can use it all year round. So let's get started. So you're gonna take a work wreath form. They had this in the wreath frame aisle. And we're gonna take some black burlap. And it really, this part really doesn't matter how you put it on. You're gonna make about 10 inch, eight inch loops here. It doesn't really have to be a certain length. And you're gonna go around your wreath twice. This is working as a base. I'm gonna show you how to do it a little bit faster here. This is not as important as the other um, burlap that we're gonna use in this video, but this just helps um, create the base of our wreath, which is what we need because we want it to be nice and full. So just take your time and go through. As you can see, I'm kind of skipping. I'm going from the bottom to the top, from the bottom to the top, but honestly, you could just do the top and then the bottom. It really isn't gonna make much of a difference. And I just want you to take and make loops until you go around two times. You should have enough burlap to do this twice. You go around twice. You can see it's not that pretty. It's okay. It doesn't need to be. But we are using this burlap that I found in the ribbon section over in the sewing, the fabrics section of Hobby Lobby. It pays to walk around Hobby Lobby and see what new things that they have because this is exactly what I did to find this burlap because I didn't know they had it. It was an amazing find. So I just used a zip tie on this one because this is a little bit stiffer burlap. Is This is not the same as the black burlap that we used before. And now we're going to stretch it out and we're gonna go about eight to 10 inches. I would say it's more like an eight inch um, length. We're going to gather it and we're just gonna go around the inside um, twist ties of this wreath frame. So only the inside of it. And I want you to go to the next one and you may need to untwist that little like um, pine looking Chanel stem, but that's okay. And then you're just gonna go around the whole wreath. So you're gonna go around the wreath once for the inside. I'm gonna show you a little bit faster here, but again, it always pays to walk around, go down every aisle at Hobby Lobby. I have found some real gems down in the, the aisles you don't think that you're gonna find wreath making supplies. So remember, if you go to check out the ribbon section, make sure to go to the fabric section as well because they have some beautiful selections over there too. So we're gonna go around the middle and then we're gonna go around the outside. This should take about one roll of this mesh, okay? That's all you're gonna need for this part. So as you see, I'm gonna go around the middle and then when I go to this part, I'm gonna go down to the bottom, the outside of this wreath. And I'm gonna do the same thing. And we're going to go to each and every one of these little Chanel stems. You may have to untie it a little bit to make sure you have enough room. But again, it's really easy. Anybody can do this. In fact, originally I wasn't gonna go with burlap, but I was gonna go a totally different direction. But listen, I think of black and gold when I think of New Year. So that's the direction I went, especially when I found this burlap. So as you can see, I'm pointing at these little bar brackets here and we are just gonna put one Chanel stem. If I had to do this over again, I would use black, not these natural colors. I feel like black would have blended a little bit better with my wreath. But again, you live and you learn and you do better next time. So once you have that, that's going to be our center part. And we're going to open up one more roll of this really pretty burlap. And we're going to just go to those five sections. We are going to gather about eight to 10 inches, probably closer to 10 inches at this point. And we are going to gather and now we're going to have a middle section just to kind of fill out this wreath even more. Even though you're not going to use this whole roll on this project, you will probably get close to it at the end. So make sure you stay tuned because at the end, I'm going to show you how to transform this wreath from New Year's to an everyday wreath. And oh my goodness, I love this burlap. I cannot say too much about it. I love it. It's beautiful. Okay, so when I think of New Year's, I think of a clock. I think of time because we're counting down. I got this really pretty clock in the clock section. They have several 
different selections that you could put on a wreath. I'd say they'd have had at least four clocks that I was eyeing for this wreath. You could even do something a little bit bigger if you wanted, but go to the clock section and grab yourself a clock. Don't worry. When you're done with this project, you can use this in your decor as well. So I just took, there's little metal brackets and I took some um, Chanel stems and I wrapped it around them. And then I'm going to place this on the wreath. I do end up uh, taking out the top Chanel stem to kind of turn my clock a little bit. Because of this clock, it's a little bit heavier than the other clocks I could have chose, but so I wanted to kind of make it more um, towards the top of my wreath. So you're gonna just take your Chanel stems, go through your burlap of your wreath, go on either side of the brackets of your wreath frame, and you're going to tie it together to secure it. I got it on originally I realized that I really didn't care for the way that it looked so I cut a piece of wire I get this stuff in the jewelry making section yes it's silver but that's okay because I have a little bit of the rub and buff um, paint that you can get at Hobby Lobby I always have little things like this from Hobby Lobby that I keep on hand so when I need to touch something up I have it and I use that rub and buff on several different projects, including something that's going on in my office right now. So such a good product to have on hand. And then I'm just gonna twist it and we're gonna make it look a little bit more at the 11 o'clock when we make this wreath. Oh, I know it's on its side, but this is the 11 o'clock point. And then I just took a little buff, rub and buff, the gold color and put over my wire. It's really, you don't have to, but I just thought it would be a great touch. So these are the ribbon choices I have. You can find the, them in the regular ribbon aisle. So let's make our bow. I got my uh, rotary mat here out and we are going to have, we're gonna start off with about 20 inches of a tail and you are gonna measure 12 inches. From my left hand to my right hand, I'm measuring 12 inches, okay? So we're gonna do this again. I'm gonna keep holding on to that middle section there and I'm gonna come back with another 12 inches. We're gonna do this on each side three times. I want three loops, 12 inches, that's the key. When you're having a hard time making bows, you need to get a ruler out, get one of these rotary mats that they carry at Hobby Lobby and use it to help you make a beautiful bow. Now, I like to call this my zip tie bow because once I get back to the middle here, we're going to do the last loop. I'm gonna get out a zip tie and that's how we're going to secure it, okay? It's really, really easy. You don't have to be nervous about making a bow. It's really easy to do. So this is why I call it my zip tie bow because we usually use more than one type of um, ribbon so that we can kind of stack them. So as you can see, we're going to cut out another 20 inch length of a tail. What we're gonna do, we're gonna do these loops a little bit, a little bit um, shorter. We're gonna go 10 inches. But as, as you can see, I get my tail going and we measure 10 inches. From my right hand to my left hand, we gather it and then we bring it back to the middle. Now on this one, I needed to twist the ribbon because this was a little bit more of a, um, a thicker ribbon so I just wanted to make sure it laid right so 10 inches two loops on both sides so we did three loops for the first bow and two loops on the second bow on each side so it just kind of gives it a little bit of dimension and I just love this ribbon again just go to the ribbon aisle and they will have it two and a half inches wide, and yes, we do have wire in this ribbon. I prefer wire in my ribbon when I make bows like this. So the next part we're gonna do is we're gonna grab another zip tie and we're gonna go over top. But I'm not going to wrap this one all the way around. As you can see, I hadn't um, cut the other zip tie. I'm going to grab a Chanel stem and I'm gonna go underneath so that our um, bow has somewhere to attach to the wreath for us and it's just really handy to do this. The second part to this is I always like to have like a middle like button cover for the middle of my bow. So I just take a length of whatever ribbon you want to take. If you prefer the gold, use the gold. And I just fold this in and I make a little really pretty cover for that middle section of our bow. I turn it over 
And then all I do is I take those Chanel stems that we have and I don't even tie the ribbon. I just twist the Chanel stems really, really good about three times. And then I'm going to cut the edges. I move the edges of those, um, oh, the tails of that, that ribbon and we cut it off. And now it's time to put on our wreath. Isn't this pretty? And stay tuned because I have something else I added to the end of this wreath for the um, bow and you could probably add it right now. So it's just a really pretty accent to it. But I had so much fun making. It was so fun making something different like this because I don't typically make really like bright and like flashy wreaths. And this one, it's New Year's, you can go all out. So now let's make it flashy. So these picks came from the section in Hobby Lobby. It's by the ribbon, at least at my store it is, but it's not with the florals. It's like with like the succulents and the fruit. And these were like $1.99 a piece. And they were, they reminded me of fireworks. That's what they reminded me of. And you know, the little horns that they blow at a New Year's Eve party. That's what this added to me. So one of the things I did not want to do on this wreath was use glue on it because we want to make it a more everyday wreath after we're done with New Year's. So I am simply because these stems have wire in them, they're perfect just to wrap around your wreath frame and they will stay put, okay? So I put a few at about 6.30, 7 o'clock on our wreath. And then we're going to put a couple more at the two o'clock point on our wreath. So pretty. Again, these are where like you find the plastic fruit, the plastic succulents between the ribbon and the flowers at your Hobby Lobby. Hey, so these I found in the party section of Hobby Lobby. Yes, I went all over Hobby Lobby for this project because I knew there were things everywhere in that store. So I love these because again, we can wrap it around the frame like I'm doing here, but then you can kind of like, you can pull those little curly cues out and it just made it so pretty. Such a finish, finishing touch on our wreath and I really am glad I, I found these again. Not where you think it is, but go where the party balloons and all that is. Now, I did pick up a pack of ornaments because it's Christmas and these really pretty gold ornaments um, were the perfect accent. Again, they're shatterproof and I just put them on a Chanel stem, two of them at a time. I put them with this group of um, stems and I put it at the two o'clock group as well. And then we're going to put it just just a little south of the clock, but this really kind of added even another layer of elegance. And I just think they just really set it off. So happy with it. What you need to do here is just wrap it around the wreath frame. And um, that's exactly what I'm doing. It up here as well, and I just love it. Tell me what, what is like your favorite Hobby Lobby find? that you weren't expecting, but you use all the time now. I would love to hear that in the comments. So I felt like the clock needed a little bit more attention. So let's give it some, all right? I had a couple more of these picks. So all together, we used about seven of these like firework gold picks. I just, I love the gold and black on this whole wreath. It's so cute. And then I added two above the clock and then we add a couple, I had two more ornaments. So we add that last couple of ornaments at the bottom, put it on the same exact way that you did on the others. But I just felt like we really needed it. Might as well use it. It just really makes such a beautiful accent. Okay, so at the end of this wreath, I decided I had this really pretty rhinestone ribbon. And again, it's in the ribbon section at Hobby Lobby. And I just cut off about the same length of the previous tails, which is about 20 inches. I would put this on when I make the bow, but because I didn't, I used a zip tie to connect it to the wreath. And we are just going to add it that way. And it's just going to add so much elegance to this. So once you get that zip tie on, or again, just do this at, when you make the bow, okay? Don't do what I did, but I wanna show you what I did because I really feel like it adds a lot to this wreath. 
But before I show you the finished product, I'm going to show you how you can take this wreath and make it for every day. So let's get started on that one. All right, so we're going to take our um, burlap that we had left over and I have some of this ribbon burlap and I'm going to kind of glue it on the edges down the middle, okay? I cut it about 20 to 22 inches long. Again, I didn't use my rotary cutter. I just wanted to see what would look good as far as what I felt would be a good size bow. And I wanted to kind of complement the, um, the whole wreath in itself by using the smaller ribbon that I got in the ribbon section at Hobby Lobby. So you're gonna do this two times. This one I did a little bit shorter than the above and we're just gonna glue it down at the edges and then we are gonna use this to make the bow part. Again, just use some hot glue. I love this glue gun. You can get it at Hobby Lobby as well, all right? So turn it over and we are going to fold it in and we are going to glue that down. I think that was about right. And I'm going to show you how you can take this and you're going to gather it. I, I kind of fold it over as you can see and then I put it together, okay? So this is gonna make the perfect bow, all right? So what we're gonna do now is I take a little clip, a clothespin to hold that while I take another piece of this ribbon. We're gonna do the same thing we did over on the other bow. I do this a lot, so if you've been watching me for a while, know that we do this a lot. So you're gonna to wanna to learn this technique. So since I did this a little different, I took a zip tie and I just used a zip tie to make sure that this was secure because I didn't want too much kind of a bulk behind our bow, okay? I cut the excess off and I add a little bit of hot glue where I cut that off, all right? And then we're going to take the rest of the actual um, tail and we're gonna make a tail. So I took a Chanel stem that went right underneath that zip tie very nicely. And you're gonna find your middle and you're going to gather, all right? And that's gonna be your tail. I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna put it over top of the back of this bow and we're going to just twist that Chanel stem around and we're going to twist this onto our bow. And then that way we have the perfect bow for this wreath. This will be a great everyday wreath. So at, at this point, I like to dovetail it. You know how I do that. I just fold it over and I cut a V out of it. So we're gonna cut it at an angle on the folded edge, all right? And that's gonna give you your perfect dovetail for this wreath. Then after we do that side and the other side, we will be ready to put this on our wreath. So at this point, we're gonna put this on our wreath, but listen, if you made it through the video this far, I love it when you guys let me know by leaving an emoji, or in this case, let's say Happy New Year. I do fix the bow a little bit. I just kind of glue that back a little bit, came out, but you guys just overlap it a little bit better than I did, all right? So you're just going to secure it and you can find these beautiful wreaths and all the products at Hobby Lobby. Once again, I wanna thank Hobby Lobby for sponsoring another video here on Julie's Wreath Boutique and I hope you have a wonderful and safe, happy new year. So join us next year as we start a new year with Julie's Wreath Boutique. Bye-bye.